How are we going everyone? I said I was going to prepare this garden bed and we started on it. I've taken all the soil off. This is the bed where I, you know, I add water to it. You can sit there and you remember mama hosing the garden bed with the watering wand and we we're soaking it, soaking that we dug down and there was no water getting through at all. It was hydrophobic. Now the soil that was here has gone over here. I've got some plastic I laid out so I can keep this soil. As crazy as it sounds, it's actually good soil, but it just needs more working. So what I'm gonna do, this is like a windrow. What I'm gonna do to this is, is add my chicken manure that I get out of our, our chicken house, our chook house. I'm gonna put some more straw down. You can see the bean straw, that's that stuff over there. And then I'm gonna blend this through, obviously my black grid and all my wonderful nutrients that we have. And I'm gonna blend it through so I can hydrate it. Now we've got some existing earth here. See this browny stuff? I'm not sure if you can see that, but this stuff here, that lighter color, is the natural earth below here, the sandy soil that it is. That stuff there, see that? So that's what I have here naturally, and I've added my composted soil on top and straw, and after two or three years, it's really disappeared. There's a little bit here. This is also what we got in the ground. All right, have a look at this. These roots here, they could be from anything. It could be from the trees, it could be from, really, it's got to be trees. They travel at least 10, 15 metres from where they're, they're growing. Now, all these roots are in this garden bed, and I can't grow anything in here effectively because it's competing against these large trees, which they're, they're like, a, like a suction cup. They just suck the moisture out of it above, and it doesn't go anywhere. Look at that. Look, this is how it is. I had no plants in here. I had, I had these artichokes growing in here. I dug them up. And I've repotted them in these uh, grow bags that I've got, the grow pots. And I've used our potting mix, so they're okay. They wilted straight away. You can see they've already kicked up again. And there's about seven of them there. I've also got the celery, and I've taken out the asparagus because it was completely struggling in there. It did nothing, absolutely nothing. This is, this is the autumn winter growth that I've got on here now that's coming on this. So I'd never got any asparagus. It's gone straight into the foliage and it's gonna go into the flowers. Now these will go back in there. Maybe, actually, you know what? I might actually leave these um, artichokes in the bags. I reckon they do really well in here. They, they, they're very reactive, they need their moisture and this is gonna breathe well for them. And if I need to, I can get them into a larger one. This is a 40 millimeter, 40 centimeter, sorry, or 400 millimeter bag. I can put them up into a 550 if they need to be. Now what we're gonna do here and uh, in the next couple of episodes, we're gonna build a wall. Now the one over there you can see is only two sleepers high. This one's gonna be at least three sleepers high, maybe four. Um, it's gonna be about six meters in length. Uh, almost two meters in width. I'm going to put a top plate on it so I could sit on it, kneel on it. Uh, but again, if you haven't seen the way I built those ones there, I'm going to do it here. Now, what I don't want to do is put the walls in and then just fill it up with soil because we've got the earth underneath. What happens in this earth here, because it's so dry and so many roots underneath, it sucks the moisture out so quickly, I can't keep it hydrated long enough, fast enough, uh, and that's why I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do instead is put my plastic liner again underneath. Now, technically, it's almost like building a wicking bed. I'm using the plastic to line the base of it, but I'm not gonna wrap it up against the walls on the side. So a wicking bed technically is like a big bathtub, right? And what you have is a couple of weep holes about 150 mil, 200 mil from the base up. <clears throat> so the bottom half of it is your reservoir of water. It holds its water. You normally have scoria in there. You have a, a little aggie pipe that you can feed water through. You have a little opening on top. I may build one of these one day in the future for you so you can see how to build one. I used to build a lot of those in the past for home gardeners who wanted them. And I found in the long term, I they look, they're great. There's nothing wrong with them. But I think what I'm going to do here for me is it'll suffice. I don't need to go to the extent of trying to line it and waterproof it. I do want it to drain out. So what I'm going to do is line the base with the plastic, put my framework on top, but then I'm going to lift up the side like I've done here. Now, I haven't finished building these, by the way. I've been told a million times by the family, put the screws in, because the nail gun's good to hold it short term. So we'll screw these in later, so ignore that. But what I've got down here, folks, I've got a colony of ants. <laughs> ignore the ants, they've got a little nest going on in there. No harm to the plants, but it's the liner that I'm referring to. So it's sitting on the ground, and what I've done is I've lifted it up, and I've put a, a three by one and a half or 70 by 35 mil uh, piece of wood there to hold the liner in place. And you can just see it there. So water can go through, 
then anything from that level up will seep out through the joins here or from the base back up again. So this will never really hold that sort of water. And I haven't got any scoria. I've actually got mulch at the bottom of this raised garden bed. So what we do is put the liner down, the mulch, then we put our composted soil on top. This was filled to the top. Have a look at it, how low it's gone. This is a year later. It's sunken at least 200 mil, uh, eight inches. So this really needs to be topped up. Now, there's a dig and no dig principle in gardening. You know, some people love a no dig garden, which means you don't actually turn it over. There's a lot of positive reasons why we do that. Turning the soil over breaks up the mycelium connection that goes on there with, between the fungi, the microbes and the plants. Now that's like a network of, of strings. You can't really see it, but it, it inter, interconnects all the living organisms that live in the soil basically uh, together. And by turning it over, you're breaking that connection. And there is scientific research done on that, which means a annual plant in your veggie garden has a short term life, so it needs that connection to happen. But what makes, it needs that connection to happen really quickly is what I'm trying to say. But what makes that connection stay there for long is the lack of turning over the soil, but the addition of planting evergreens, perennials in there, you know, plants that don't have to be dug up and the roots remain in there. So that network of um, existing organisms feed off those plants that are there for a year, two years and five years. And then in between, you put all your little annuals. And it really, look, all this is, is great in theory, in reality, every environment, every microclimate varies. This garden here, from what I used to have back in Melbourne, um, in Greenvale, uh, the microclimates there are vastly different, you know, from opposite ends. Uh, are at opposite ends, meaning that the, the, the soil here is difficult, the, the surroundings are very difficult to work with and extremely harsh on the plants. So for me, having a ground garden bed like that is difficult to grow. Both these beds are struggling. These beds that you can see are thriving, they're doing much better and they get very little attention from me, folks. I'm on 20 acres, I haven't got, you know, five hours a day every day to look after this veggie garden. It's a, it's a survival of the fittest. So if you can manage a garden bed with the, the minimum effort put into it, you're going to win. So what you need to do is basically set it up so that you don't have to be there constantly watering irrigation is one tip. Mulch is another. Raised garden bed is another. Putting a liner underneath even enhances the ability to retain its moisture. So when we build this bed, raised garden bed all the way around on the outside, liner underneath, fold it over so it retains the moisture. We're not competing with the earth underneath and then we create the microbes and the fungi inside there. I haven't got pre um, annuals, I'm oh, sorry, I haven't got evergreens. I have got some perennials and I consider my silver beet to be that because I just cut them back down. That's their second year now in that ground there and I reckon I'll get another year at least out of those. So I don't dig them up. I am going to dig them up for the purpose of building the garden bed but if they were stationary there, I would leave them there and plant in between them. This garden bed's going to get raised, folks, and I'm going to be filming this for you to show you the step-by-step -step on how I do it. And you can make adjustments to it. There's no perfect way. There's many different ways of doing it. So stay tuned to watch the development. It's not going to happen in one... Well, actually, it's going to have to happen in one day because if I start it, I'm going to have to finish it. So stay tuned for that episode on building these raised garden beds and planting it out. And if you need anything for your garden, check out our website. And also, folks, um, the website yesterday, we had a downing or an outage on it, so we had some technical issues with the uh, any orders going through the checkout with the credit card payments. Our apologies for that. I know we had a lot of phone calls. The ladies inside online who were taking the calls were telling me the problem. So we've managed to fix it. So there are some specials running on there. We've extended it all. So you get your 70% off plus an extra 35% off everything by using that coupon code. So it was 20%. We've upped it to 35 to make up for those lost, lost times and for those who struggled and got frustrated with the whole system. Our apologies on that. But check it out. Vasilisgarden.com everything you need at the one website from me Vasily Maresi